Over the last few weeks, I've spent a fair amount of time with Exapunks, a programming puzzle game recently released by Zaktronics. Initially, I was worried that it would be too much for me, and I wouldn't get very far. While I've got a little bit of history with programming, it never really went beyond the basics, and that was over 10 years ago at this point, so that knowledge is mostly lost to the ether. Cue my surprise when I get my hands on it and find it challenging, but never unreasonable. At first, I wasn't quite able to nail down how it managed to be approachable and feel like programming without that knowledge requirement. But after trying to put my thoughts into words and discuss it with friends, it all came together. The language barrier. I never really felt like I was tripping over language and straining to translate what I needed. The challenge was entirely problem solving. Syntax is simple to the point of non-existence, so it was never an issue when directing exas, the small bots that you program, toward what I wanted them to do. Add in that commands and how systems work are taught to you through reading relevant articles in zines, small booklets styled after underground magazines, and learning how to code in exapunks felt incredibly straightforward and organic. Syntax is arguably the most daunting wall facing those who would approach programming, but Zaktronics eschews all of that complexity in favor of simple, straight-to-the-point commands that are much easier to parse. Strongly reminiscent of assembly language, all code is written in single-line commands, lacking much of the abstraction present in higher-level coding, like the syntactical need for semicolons, colons, commas, etc., as well as the functions of, well, functions, if statements, else statements, if else statements, you get the idea. Much of the functionality of these has been replaced with marks, essentially just headers within the code that act as bookmarks that you can direct instruction toward with jump commands. Say, for example, that you were to test if a number contained within a file were the number 3. You could set up jump commands that tell your program to move to specific chunks of code depending on whether that came out true or false. You can also use similar logic to loop through a chunk of code until a condition you specify happens, then let it continue on. Not only is this far simpler than setting up logic statements or creating functions, but its flexibility means that it can be used for a wide variety of problems. Exapunks takes a simplified approach to variables as well. Unlike an actual code, variables cannot be created. Rather, you have access to a few different pre-existing ones that act as locations to temporarily store data. The X, T, M, and F registers. Each exa has their own X and T banks that you can write information to and read from, with T having the caveat that any time you test if something is true or false, it gets overwritten with a 1 for true or 0 for false. M also technically stores information, but M is shared across exas, either globally or locally within the host depending on how you use it. It only holds onto information until it gets read by another exa, with the one transmitting it tied up until then. And finally, the last type of data storage in Exapunks is the F register, which pertains specifically to any file currently being held by that exa. Information written to the F register stores in whatever entry is currently selected, overriding any previous data or pending it if at the end of the file. Files assumedly have a limit on how much data they're able to store, but they're complex enough to navigate through that I found them too unwieldy to use regularly. These limitations work out quite wonderfully for fostering creativity, in my experience. Variables can be incremented as a sort of counter, which works wonderfully well for any sort of loops that you want to repeat a certain number of times. Avoiding a quality test for as long as possible can allow you to use T as a second data storage bank, and exist can hold on to information stored in M until it is needed elsewhere, assuming you're okay with having one unit sit idle. Loops can be set up to compare F to what is stored in X to scan through a file looking for specific information, and so on. Much of the puzzles in Exapunks revolve around information management, and the limits on how you are able to store information make sure that you use all the tools at your disposal. It's incredibly effective at making sure that you have learned what you need to know about exas and how the different systems work, and that you understand it well enough to apply it in any number of ways. A great example of the flexibility of Exapunk systems, and one of my favorite commands in the game, would have to be REPL. When called, this command replicates the current exa and starts them with the same programming but from a specific label of your choosing. This allows for a lot of interesting potential solutions provided some lateral thinking. Care must be taken, however. Replicating means that you aren't able to provide specific programming for these cloned exas. Everything must be prearranged on the original. Given the right circumstances though, and proper planning, you can potentially fan out one exa into many, covering a lot of functionality with fewer lines of code and that efficiency works astoundingly well in reinforcing that way of thinking. As with other Zaktronics games, you can brute force a solution in Exapunks easily enough. 
Finding a working solution isn't the hard part, it's in finding an elegant solution that efficiently does what you need it to with as little wasted time and effort as possible. This is where problem solving comes in to save the day. Breaking apart a problem into its smallest components and solving it piece by piece is nigh essential for writing efficient code. And that itself is the key element of programming, problem solving. Languages and syntax are just the tools. At its heart, programming is a matter of translating what you want done into commands that a computer can process. Exapunks manages to simplify the trappings of programming and break it down to its very core, a core that is much more approachable to those who aren't already familiar with writing code. It removes a lot of the obfuscation that high-level coding has, leaving with simple, direct commands that don't break just because you forgot to place a freaking semicolon at the end of a line. It gives people who have always had an interest in programming, but felt intimidated by the seemingly insurmountable barrier to entry, a chance to explore this hobby and potentially discover a new passion. Broadening horizons is always a plus in my book, and if it encourages anybody to follow their dreams and get into programming, then that is fantastic. Personally, I know that it's gotten me thinking about code for the first time in a long time.